All right, welcome back. We continue live right here on the nightly sports call, 412-575-2600. I'm Bob Pompiani. We'll take your calls until 11 o'clock today. And let's get rolling here with Jake and Shadyside. Hello, Jake. How are you tonight? Yeah, hey, I'm doing good. How about you, Bob? Good. What's on your mind, Jake? Well, you know, I just watched a lot of college football today, and uh, I kind of watched conferences kind of beat each other up. I saw Georgia lose to an SEC team. Mm. I saw a lot of Big Ten teams lose to each other. Bob, how do you feel about, like, a 16 playoff where the Power Five conferences each get one in and you get, like, an at-large, like a Notre Dame or somebody like that? I would do agree with I that. Get, I think one of the – Do you think I would get, like, more viewers? No, I think eventually they're heading in that direction, Jake. And I think a team like Central Florida this year is one of those on the outside looking in, but no one knows about what they do, but they're a very good team. They're a mid-major kind of team, and maybe they should be included in it as well. But thanks for the call. But I think eventually they will add on. You know, it took a while to get from two to four, so I guess you got to go one step at a time here. But, yeah, I think the more opportunities, because there's right now they're all bunched together. And to differentiate between one versus eight actually is hard to do. As you mentioned, we saw a team like Auburn, and they're going to be in this conversation now. They, they started the day ranked 10th. They beat number one, and they beat them handily. They should move up. Uh, Miami has a right to say, well, we should be up in the top four after spanking Notre Dame the way they're doing it tonight. And, of course, Oklahoma is putting a beating on TCU tonight. So they'll be in the picture. You wonder about Wisconsin. Wisconsin doesn't get a lot of love. They're undefeated, and they're in the Big Ten. They beat Iowa today. So uh, eventually these games coming up will dictate a lot about what goes in. But the Big Ten could be shut out completely of this whole proceedings. Who knows? So you'll see it increase from four to six and then eventually eight. It may take a long time, but I think that's the way it's going to go. Let's go to Dave and Carnegie. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Buck? How you doing, Dave? I just want to I just want to pile on to this this argument and and just complain that like none of us are sitting here and talking about actual college football and the results of the games. And instead, we're talking about seeding and who's going to be one and who's going to be four, who's going to be two. And you know, if this was the NFL, imagine sitting here and just talking about seeding, AFC seedings all day long. It's all we're subjective, right? About the product. Driving yeah. me crazy. I, well, I agree, but it's it's part of what makes it fun, though, isn't it? I mean, you have a, this conversation that goes on all season long, and all these games bring on even more importance. I just think what would be fun would be watching the top eight or 12 teams and then being able to see how they perform so you can get to a playoff. All right, well, I think eventually you will, uh, as I said, I think that day will be coming. I don't know when that day is, Dave, but, um, but there is a lot of subjectivity involved here. And, not, you know, there are going to be teams left out who deserve to be in there. Uh, like, if I'm looking at it right now, based on what I saw, you mean Alabama, after coming from behind like they did tonight against Mississippi State and winning that game in a very tough place to play, they'll be number one. The question is who's number two? Does Clemson deserve to go from four to two? Um, to me, they weren't all that impressive, but they won. Uh, they do have one loss on their record. Uh, so who becomes three and four if Clemson moves up to two? How far down do you put Georgia? That's a good question. Uh, Notre Dame will fall out of it. Oklahoma will move into it, you would think. What about Wisconsin? Do they deserve to be in it? Their schedule's not as difficult as others, at least when you look at it, again, on a subjective level. So uh, you never know how this is going to go. Jake, shady side. What's up, Jake? Hey, Bob. Hey, I was going to talk about uh, who you thought should be top four if uh, they got knocked out tonight because you see Notre Dame losing tonight. But, I mean, that's college, and we'll let uh, – We'll let the, uh, the guys get paid more than us decide who's going to get top four there. What about the Pens recently? Like, I, I mean, I don't really know, Bob. They're not doing too hot. Like, you think they're going to pull it back? I remember two years ago, we didn't even think they were going to get in the playoffs. Right. All of a sudden, they came it's back too early. from nowhere. It's too early, Jake. I really believe they're going to be fine. I do. I think uh, this is a team that has too much talent not to. I think that when you see what they're doing right now, they're struggling because they're playing a lot of road games. Thank you for the call, by the way. Uh, this is 13 road games in the first 19, only six at home, 13 on the road. So they're going to make good with a lot of those, and they're undefeated at home. So it's just a matter of time, and right now they're going to an uh, overtime shootout. So at least they got a point after they trailed in this game for large portions of this game. Uh, and Tristan Jari, I thought, played very well tonight. Uh, you know, very aggressive coming out on angles. I don't think you can blame him for those goals that he gave up. He's a young guy who's going to be the backup to Matt Murray. That's going to be his role. A lot of people wonder about, uh, well, should he be playing more down in Wilkesbury? And the problem with that is, what is his role in the future? His role will be the backup. That's what it's going to be. So if it's the backup and he's ready to be the backup now, you put him in the backup. 
Uh, they tried not to do that when they brought in Antti Niemi, but you know, bottom line is Niemi didn't get it done. Uh, Jari's been up here. He's done a pretty good job. I thought the Smith played, uh, you know, it was one game, and he played okay. I thought he got a little bit of a uh, shaft on that one. He's been playing well in Wilkesbury Scranton, but I think they're going to be fine. I wouldn't worry about them. John and Greentree is next up on hey, the sports call. Hey, Payne Fistick and McCall, man. How you doing today, man? How what's you? up, John? Hey, what's up, man? Um, hey, um, do you think the Stewarts can beat Tennessee uh, come Thursday? Uh, I think the Stewarts can beat Tennessee. Uh, I just wanted to know what you think we can beat Tennessee. Thank you. Well, first of all, they got to not look beyond this game tomorrow, and it's Indianapolis. And I think uh, that's a tough game on Thursday because number one is a short week, but number two, Marcus Mariota and that team is a pretty good team. That's Dick LeBeau's team coming back to Pittsburgh. So on a Thursday night, you never know what can happen, but I think they're better than them. So I would expect, being a home game, that they'll take care of business. So those will be two games in four days, and then they get a little bit of an extended opportunity to, um, you know, to take their time. And they have a lot of home games left. Five of the next eight to end the season are at home. So I think the Steelers are in pretty good shape, and they will not have to play uh, and see some of the best quarterbacks going, uh, although they still have Tom Brady, who continues to play well at a very um, you know, older age. Uh, I was talking today on my radio show about, it was interesting, they had a uh, ESPN, the magazine article about who will be the starting quarterbacks for NFL teams in the year 2020. Uh, and it was more, you know, a, a guess, use some logic, whatever the case may be. Uh, and some of the ones you would expect to be there, like uh, Matthew Stafford in Detroit, like Andy Dalton in Cincinnati, Joe Flacco even is predicted to be the quarterback in Baltimore in the year 2020, although he looks pretty banged up right now. But they have some other interesting ones in that list. Uh, and one of them is Josh Dobbs being the uh, starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2020. Some people may look at that and say, wait a minute, what does that signify? That he's actually developing and will be good enough to do it? Or by default, does he get that job? Because they, maybe he tried to draft someone next year or the year after and it didn't work out. So there's a lot of speculation on that. But one thing New England has, Tom Brady listed as the starting quarterback in 2020, which would make him 43 years old. And you wonder how long he can keep doing this. But since his ACL injury in 2008, he has not missed a game. He's been back, not counting suspension and deflate gate, but I'm talking about for injury. He's been good. He gets rid of the ball quick. They don't get a lot of pressure on him. He's reduced the number of hits he takes, and I think that bodes well for Ben Roethlisberger, too, because he's only been sacked 10 times so far this season. All right, we're going to take a break here. 412 575 2600. We'll get more calls, and we'll have. Uh, potentially a resolution to this Penguin-Nashville game, which is 4-4 in three-on-three overtime. Back right after this on Pittsburgh CW.